I think you can come in the front so I can see you easily. If you are sitting behind, it becomes difficult for me. Let us uh, begin with the next example of simulation that is the example of our DC motor and we have already seen this example, we know now how its bond graph is obtained. Just as a review, we start with the electrical side, we have the source here, we have the armature resistance, armature inductance, we have the electromechanical action given by this gyrator and we have the uh, inertia on the mechanical side that is rotary inertia. So the angular momentum of this disc is going to change. We have mu here as the modulus of this gyrator. So the current is going to be related to the torque using this gyrator relationship. Torque equal to mu IA and we know that there will be a back EMF also which is generated EB is equal to mu omega and we could also take into account the damping on account of this uh, bearing here. <coughs> so let us uh, start, uh, here is also our observation of the displacement. Let us start with the numbering of the bonds, I have taken some numbering. We have two states as we discussed and there is one measurement which is the displacement. So we have the causality over here and you know now how the causality was done. We started with the sources. For this one junction, uh, we placed the causal stroke near the I element. The other bonds on this one junction have to follow this. For gyrator, the causality is flow to effort. And for this I element, here you have the stroke here. So for this one junction, the bonds should take causality like this. <coughs> now from here, we will go back, we will go to the coding for this. We are going to simulate this system and we will see how this has been coded. In the directory which I, have, uh, which I am going to provide you, you will have this example. Uh, this is in the directory simulation examples DC motor and in this you have a set of files. The first file which we are going to open is, we will close our earlier files Vanderpoel and here we have the DC motor file. You see the structure of all simulation is organized in the form of three files and it is a common template. So you can take any system, linear, non-linear, any system, any physical system and organize your simulation in this manner. So here we have the time span as 0 to 5 seconds. We have got, we are taking three states. There is one measurement also in this, but here we are going to take the first state as momentum, the second as the angular momentum, the first is electrical momentum or flux linkage, second is angular momentum and third is the initial angular position, okay, initially we say that the angular position is at 0 and uh, the electrical momentum also is 0 and the angular momentum also is 0. So it is like a system which is totally at rest, okay, in all sense of the term. Then we specify the parameters, parameters we take the diameter of the rotor drum to be a 0.1 meters that is uh, 100 millimeters and uh, <coughs> MR that is mass of the uh, rotor as 0.1 that means 100 grams and we take the moment of inertia of the rotor as MR into dr square divided by 8 this is actually if you uh, take it as a cylindrical solid and here you have the uh, inductance, armature inductance, I have taken it here as 0.5, we can vary, we can change this when you want to study and uh, here you have RA equal to 10 
armature resistance and RB taken as 0.5. Uh, mu has been taken from some actual uh, manufacturing uh, manufacture data of Maxon motors. So this 14 to 10 raised to minus 3 units are given here and we will be providing some input and the input is in a particular form. So I will discuss this form with you shortly. Right. Amplitude has been taken as 1, frequency 0. Now our ODE file which we are supposed to get from bond graph is here, DC motor ODE. So we will open this file and here we see that the name of the file and the name of this function are the same. The input format is exactly the same. Input arguments are time and state at the particular value of time. The output is out 1. And here you have the order in which the states are provided. So first state is P1 which is the electrical momentum, X2 second state is the angular momentum and the third state has been taken as the angular displacement. And then we have the input, the excitation voltage that is amplitude multiplied by 1 plus sign of something. So since we have taken frequency as 0, this sign will be 0 and here you will be just left with amplitude multiplied by 1. So it is like you are applying a DC waveform to this. So we will just apply a DC yeah. voltage to our motor okay? and uh, we will see now, let us go step by step, we will see the coding first. So in this, we start with the first question. What is it? We start with the sources. What does the, this element give to the system? Effort. It is effort 5. And you can see here that effort 5 is equal to V. And what is V? V has been written down in terms of parameters. And time also has been taken explicitly over here. Then the second is what does this system, uh, what does this element give to this system? It gives effort of flow, flow 1. And what is flow 1? It is P1 upon LA. Okay. Look at the element here, this I element. What does it give to the system? Flow 2. So flow 2 is P2 upon JD. Okay? So these are constitutive equations for this. It's very simple. Then we come to the R element on the electrical side. What does it give to this? Effort. It is effort 3. So look at line 22. We have effort 3 is equal to RA into flow 3. And flow 3 is what? Flow 3 is being brought into this junction from flow 1. So flow 3 equal to flow 1. And flow 1 has already been defined earlier on line 18. Done. So we go to the next. What does this element give to this? It provides information of effort. So effort is, if it is a linear viscous damping, R into flow 4. And what is flow 4? Flow 4 is brought into this junction from this bond. It is flow 2. So flow 4 equal to flow 2. And flow 2 has already been defined earlier in our earlier equation on line 19. So done. Then we come to the second part of our algorithm for equation derivation. That is what does the system give to the elements with integral causality or to the storage elements? So what does, we have only two of them. In fact, the third is a measurement. We can ask this question to all three of them. 
So what does this system provide to this? It gives effort one, which is actually rate of change of the angle of the electrical momentum, and that is dP one is equal to E one. What is E one? E one is E five minus E three minus E six. That is E five minus E three minus E six. What is E six? What is E five? E five has already been defined earlier. It has been defined earlier on line sixteen. So we need not worry about it. What about E E three? E three has been defined earlier on line twenty two, and E six needs to be defined. Now E three is what? Six. Uh, sorry, E six. E six is what? E six is the back EMF, and E six is equal to mu times flow seven. Okay, so it is mu times flow seven. Flow seven is equal to flow seven. Is brought into this junction by this bond, bond two, and that is actually flow two. And flow two has already been defined earlier on line nineteen. So you have the first set of equations. I am not deriving these equations in symbolic form. If you are interested, I can do that. But I think I want to show here that without deriving the equations, just following this algorithm, your simulation code is already being is being generated. You can automate this. You can write a program to have this done, and that is what the commercially available software do. <clears throat> Next is, what does this system give to this element? It gives effort, effort two. So effort two is actually the rate of change of momentum, angular momentum, and effort two is actually what is effort two? It is effort seven minus effort four. Effort seven minus effort four. Why did I not take effort na effort eight? Because it is a sensor, and a sensor is not supposed to load the system. Okay, so effort seven minus effort four. What is effort seven? Effort seven, according to the gyrator relationship, is mu times flow six. So we have got effort seven equal to mu times flow six, and flow six. What is flow six? In this one junction, all the flows are the same. But who is bringing in the information of flow? It is flow one, and flow one has flow six equal to flow one, and flow one has been defined earlier on line eighteen. So you don't have to worry about. It. In the same way. For the last state, we take what does the system give to this effort of flow? Flow eight, rate of change of displacement dQ eight is equal to flow eight. And what is this flow eight? Flow eight is brought into this junction from this bond. Flow two. All that you have to do is is just follow the causal path. So flow eight comes into this jun junction from flow two, and flow two has already been defined over here <coughs> on line nineteen. So it's done. So now you have got the derivatives of all these three variables. Now you just keep them in the same order, okay? And so this becomes dP one as dX one, dP two as dX two. dq8 as dx exactly the same algorithm as we did earlier you arrange them and you obtain the column vector of the derivative of the states and you send it as an output and this output is the output of this function which will be called at every runge kutta time so this is it and then we can also have a look at the plot file which is exactly all which has the same which follows the same pattern as the other